Hey, it's Christine from StoryWorthy. Today on the show, actress Mary Birdsong talks about how her mother got the money to send her to Paris when she was 16. I was in a French class from fourth grade on, which was awesome. And I think my sophomore year, they were going to Paris for a cultural educational trip. And I really wanted to go. And I think at first my mom did something reasonable, like ask my father if he could help us out. Um, to pay for it, and um, he did not want to do that. My mom did what any practical parent would do in this situation. She borrowed $300 from a priest and took it to Atlantic City to play blackjack. She was gambling to try and win the money. She was good at it. Today on the show, actress Mary Birdsong talks about how her mother got the money to send her to Paris on a school trip when she was 16. Stay close. Hey, hon, how you doing? This is Mary Birdsong. You're listening to Story Worthy. Okay? All right, I gotta go. Welcome to Story Worthy. My name is Christine Blackburn, and I'm coming to you from Los Angeles, California. Whether you're a longtime fan of the show of over nine years... What is happening, Mary Birdsong? Nine years. I know. Or if you're a new listener, welcome to Story Worthy. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the story last week with Albert Corrado. Um, Albert is a friend of mine. He told a very difficult story about his sister being killed uh, at Trader Joe's uh, while she was working. And it happened last summer, July 21st of 2018, and... um, Albert and I actually recorded it last fall, but then because of legal purposes, he wasn't allowed to uh, to drop it until the case was over with the LAPD, who is who shot his sister. <gasps> yeah. Anyway, it's it's a terrible terrible situation. But the story he told, you know, the story of the day, it's really very beautiful. It's sad. It's heartbreaking. But it's also like he's a great he's a great speaker, and he's an inspiration. And uh, he's just been through a lot. So anyway, you guys, go back. Listen to Albert's story. But wow. not today. Not today because I'm here with actress and comedian Mary Birdsong. And she brings forth the topic, turning 16 in Paris. Mm. Turning 16 in Paris. I was telling c'est you vrai, earlier. C'est vrai. Yeah, s'il vous plaît. I uh, was telling you earlier that I could have a podcast called or a, a, a story called Honeymooning in Paris. Because I spent both of my honeymoons in Paris. I wonder, do you know how to say honeymoon in Paris? That's a good one to know how to... Because I don't think that would translate directly. No, but You know, it'd be like, I want some honey pastries. Like, it wouldn't, you know, honeymoon. Bonjour. La lune. Merci beaucoup. Yeah. Uh, Chance élysées. C'est magnifique. (laughs) Je parle français un peu. Listen, Paris is, in my opinion, still, to this day, to me, it's the ultimate city to go to. It's so cool. It's just so, everywhere you turn, it's like an outdoor museum. Yeah. And I just instantly feel like, I mean, I haven't been back since I was 16, oh my by the way. Oh gosh, really? But even then, like, I didn't know shit from shit, but I was like, I'm Dorothy Parker and Ernest, Ernest Hemingway. Yeah, and doesn't it, it leaves such an impression. Yeah. And th- the other thing is, it is timeless. So if you go back today, it would be similar, but here's the difference. You would eat in better restaurants, mm. I'm sure, and stay probably more comfortably. Right. At least when I've traveled, as a, like I was uh, backpacking when I was 21, uh, and we went through Paris, and you know we're just staying in hostels. And, mm-hmm. But then I was a little older. I was there like four years ago, uh, actually, like on a date, and it was very, very nice. Do you know what I mean? The point is, I love Paris, and I'm anxious to hear your story. But when I was 16, I certainly wasn't going to Paris. I mean, first of all, my family could have never afforded it. Because actually, Mary, like you, I I think you're one of five, or are you one of six? Let me see. Uh, I have three brothers and sisters I grew up with and two half-sisters that I didn't grow up with. But you're one of six. Whatever that is. You are one of six. I'm one of six. And I have four sisters. Uh, Anyway, so when we were growing up, of course, there was no money whatsoever. The only thing we did growing up was we would leave Pittsburgh and drive seven and a half hours to the Jersey Shore... (gasps) Which I knew you grew up on. Yeah, honey. And you went to the New Jersey Shore, hon. I told you. We have a lot in common. We oh, really do. Hun. That's right. And when I was 17, I moved down to the shore and I worked at Core Brothers uh, Yogurt on the boardwalk. And then the following year, I went back, did the same thing, and I was lifeguarded. And we called the tourists. I hope, I hope they still, I mean, was it? 
Shoobies. Shoobies. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Somebody knows what shoobies, shoobies means. That's what we call people that like, you know, weren't locals. And I was only there three months of the year, but I, I felt like I was a local. Oh yeah. Is he a shooby? And this was like early 80s. And so we're talking um, Hobie Cats, OP Shorts. Totally. <laughs> Catamarans. It was oh my a God. Pringle. My favorite store was Surf Unlimited. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm still in touch with the owner. He moved to Arizona. John Gross. But you live down in Long Long Island, Long, Long Beach Island. Long Beach Island, yeah. And and that is more of a. It's South Jersey, but it's more of like an outer bank, isn't it? Or yeah, it's, um, it's I guess a barrier island. They call it. It's almost like a mini Manhattan, so a skinnier, minier Manhattan. Yeah. So it gets hit first in the it, hurricane. It does. In fact, um, it when Sandy uh, Hurricane Sandy happened, it literally it got trisected, not just bisected. It got split into three parts. Well, is any of your family still there? No, my mom had a house up until. Uh, she passed away in uh, 2016. She had a house oh, on the wow. on the mainland by that point, which I was just horrified. I was like, "We're going to be pineys." That's what we called. <laughs> if you lived on the mainland, you were a piney. And, and the pine barrens. I see. Interesting. Oh, it's so surprising. Which was like deliverance. I call it deliverance with surfboards. It was really yeah. you would have thought you were in like backwoods Mississippi. Yeah, or the Sopranos. Remember when they drove? Yes, Adriana that's a great episode. To the pine barrens. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the one. Right, it's the home of the Jersey, Jersey Devil. Yes, interesting. And so were you actually then on the water, on the beach? Yeah. That's that's where I grew up. It was a really beautiful... I mean, as a kid, I was like, it's so boring. We didn't have like... We didn't have a McDonald's. We didn't have a mall. We didn't have a, you know... um, But yeah, you're really isolated. Really isolated. There were no no traffic lights nine months out of the year. Yeah. Um, You know, really... I remember when we went to high school, we had to go to the mainland because there was no high school on the island. And they were like, (laughs) do you guys have a school there? Did you, you and I was like, no, we just catch yeah. up. They just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it is such a, it's so isolated in that it's, it's, you've got a summer group that comes in for 90 days and then yeah. it's back to nobody. Yeah. So it's kind of much. an interesting mix of like small town, big town. But wasn't it always like in the summer, like all these new crops of like boys would oh, come totally. in because they're vacationing and stuff. Right? I was so in love with Jeff Stark. He was from <laughs> upper, you know, he went to the upper Derby country day school in Paramus. <laughs> He was a Jew from Paramus. And I was like, he's so exotic. Yeah. Well, he probably was. And rich. Yeah. He probably was that too. Mm-hmm. How fun. What, what was down there though? Real quick in Jersey, what was down there like in terms of, um, there was no boardwalk, right? There weren't, no. it wasn't like an amusement park. No, I think there was maybe in like the 1800s, but there wasn't. Uh, <laughs> Are you kidding? Right I'm not now? kidding. I you, think there was in like 1800s really? and it got like washed away. Wow. Yeah. Strange. Um, well, I could see it getting washed away. I mean, Hurricane Sandy took a lot of boardwalks boardwalks out, yeah. right? And in the 70s, I guess, or the 80s, there was a, maybe the 60s, there was a huge hurricane as well. Yeah. Did it wipe out Asbury Park? Was that one of I'm them? I'm not or? sure. I just keep, for, I keep seeing on the news like uh, a pier with, you know, the rides at the end and then, they, yes, and then the yeah. roller coaster is like half off. I think they had like a Ferris wheel yeah. in the oh, ocean God. and yeah. Oh God. Um, but yeah, my mom, there was no industry to speak of at yeah. all. Yeah. And my mom had no degree, no job skills, but she was like, she was knew she was divorcing my father. She was going for a drive with us kids. And she was like, and I just saw the sign. Wow. On the road that said Long Beach Island. And I thought that would make a wonderful place to raise children. And so I drove there. Like, she was just That's like... unbelievable. She's just a bizarre, wonderful creature. But she must have been, like, incredibly strong-willed to just take children and move them there. Kind mm. of. I have a little bit of that sort of, like, big sweeping gesture. Almost yeah. like Mary Lynn Rice Cub. Yeah. If you guys haven't listened to the Mary Ly- Lynn Rice Cub episode, it's fantastic. Yeah. Just kind of like, I'm going to go to Mexico. Like, just get these ideas and think it's going to work out. But it did work out, And it though. did work out. Actually, in hindsight, yeah, it was a great move. Not not economically yeah. for her or us, but but a wonderful, and safe, safe place to go. We didn't lock the doors. We ran around barefoot till it got dark. Uh, I have a child. I don't know if you look around my place here. You will see hints of my child. It's so not a child house, though. Like, I didn't have to step over any toys. <laughs> well, now, because see, she's a little older. She's 12 years old. But I got to tell you something. Being a parent, it is so much easier to put your kid in front of a screen that, than help them find a book that they like. 
You know what I mean? Like my daughter has a lot of books, but what happens is she reads the same books over and over. Like <laughs> I don't need any more wimpy kid. I mean, not, not, not that there's anything wrong with right, that. Right, right, right. But sometimes you want to expand their minds. And so we have found this really cool book club and it's called Literati. L-I-T-E-R-A-T-I. And I got to tell you, it is very cool. It's a subscription book club that makes it easy to find unique and interesting books for your kids. So literary boxes, they contain five age-appropriate books based on a theme, right? Like the spirit of adventure or the animal kingdom. So right off the bat, it's personalized is what it is. It also contains exclusive original art and a personalized note for your child. Plus, they give you these really cool little stickers that your child can put on their books. Each month, you buy the books you want. You return the rest for free. It's super easy. They give you this really sturdy box and there's no charge to return the books. And for a limited time right now, you guys, if you go to Literati Books, Dot com and use the promo code STORY, you'll get $20 off your first box. Plus, kids three and up get a special blacklight pen. Now, this is their very best offer, you guys, anywhere. So to get it, you have to go to literatibooks.com, use the promo code STORY, you'll get 20 bucks off your first box. Plus, you'll get a free blacklight pen for kids three and up. How fun. I love a blacklight pen. Anyway, you guys, again, literatibooks.com, use the promo code STORY, and you will get 20 bucks off your first month. You guys are going to try this out. Book clubs. It's fun, right? Oh, totally. It reminds me of um, Netflix before inter- before you, like you would, you would return them. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you didn't watch stuff yeah. online, they would send you movies, you would return them for free and it was like, this is so convenient. Yeah, because, it, because there's no postage involved. Yeah. And so that's really nice. And, and there's not that like crazy like library pressure. Like, <laughs> oh, they're, they're going to arrest yeah. me. Shh, shh. My daughter was thrilled when she got this box. And uh, here's one book I'm holding in my hand called Can a Bee Sting a Bee? It's a good question, isn't it? Anyway, it's great. I love it. I can never say no to my kid if it has to do with books or music. Is there an age limit? Because I don't have children and it sounds good to me. Funny you should say that. We all like to read. Like, you know, when you go to a restaurant, you're like, can I get the like junior hot dog? Yeah, I think you can do that. With the clown face bun? <laughs> That's what I want. And I want the um, placemat to play on as right. well. I mean, I want something to do. I want crayons. Listen. And I want foie gras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm an adult and I act like a child. I'm going to get what I want. You have done so many incredible roles as an actress. You have been a comedic actress. You are a dramatic actress. You're like everything in between. And then on top of it, you sing. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm so impressed. Thank you. I mean, really, you're like the quadruple threat. Thank you. What is? I know people ask you this all the time, I bet, but before we get to your story, what is harder to do for you, comedy or drama? Drama. Really? Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Because, like, for instance, in you were in The Descendants. Yeah. Which, first of all, I love that movie to begin with because I love movies Thank set you. in Hawaii. Isn't it great? It's yeah. a really great film. It's a great film all the way around. It's an interesting premise. You know, you know, George Clooney's wife is on a motorboat and they hit something and she goes sailing off the motorboat with a very serious head injury. Yeah, so she's in a coma for the whole she, movie. She's in a coma the whole movie. Yeah, it's pretty grim. I told the actress, and I can't, I'm sorry I can't remember her name, but the woman who played the wife who's in a coma, and I played her best friend. I was like, if you do not write a one-woman show about finally being in a movie with George Clooney where he kisses you (laughs) and not getting to speak or do anything but lay in a bed, there's that one scene where he just like loses it toward the end. Yes. And she's in that bed lying there. I don't know how they made her look so gaunt. Yeah, and connected to all those wires. Plus, she smoked. And she was dying. She was like, had to lay there in a hospital where you can't smoke the entire wow. time. Wow. But you know it wasn't I mean? a real hospital. It was a set. Uh, I think it was. No kidding. But I think we were, I don't know if the whole hospital was. Where, what hospital? Was it Queen's Hospital in Honolulu? By any chance? I can't remember. Queen's Medical Center. Because I happened to spend some time there. All right. Just out of the blue. You, you know. You honeymooned there for your third <laughs> That's marriage? Right. That's right. <laughs> No, I'm going back. To, I'm going back to Paris. I have set a precedent. Sure, all the marriages have failed, but that's not the point. Uh, listen, I'm thrilled that you're here, and we've got lots more to talk about. But first, time, but first, we're going to hear your story about turning 16 in Paris. By the way, when I was 16, we, like I said, we went to the Jersey Shore, and then if it was like a school thing, we just went to the zoo every year. We went to the zoo. Every year, and we'd go to the Heinz factory, because I grew up in Pittsburgh. I love it. <laughs> and they made ketchup there. You're like, this is hot. And that was this it. This is such a turn on. That was all the places Heinz we went. Heinz ketchup. So. 
Listen, you guys, before we get to Mary's story, I wanted to remind you to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Storyworthy. You know all that stuff. I also started a Patreon campaign. I've got some people over there supporting me, which is fun. I will actually help you write your own story if you're interested in something like that. So go over there, check out the four tiers. It's no big deal, no pressure. Patreon.com slash Storyworthy. I love you. You love me. Sponsors come and go. But here we are with Mary Birdsong. I was going to say contestant number. Not contestant <laughs> number. Yes, no. You I hope I win. Do I win the cat? Do guess, I win Sophie? I kid you not. Your guest 575. Wow. So anyway, you guys, um, you've been with me for a while. I've been with you. Help me out. Would you do that, please? Yes. Thank you. P.S. You're the only podcast host I know that makes me laugh during the like social media pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're just like, come Social on, just do it. I can't take Come on, it, you guys, just come on. The only thing I kind of like. You're so good about it. I like Twitter. I do like Twitter yeah. because I like wordplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than that, I have, it's, it's a chore, man. Oh my God, I It's know. a chore. I mean, I, I respect it and I'm thrilled to have the platforms available to get my show out. Because honestly, without Facebook, I might not have ever had a podcast. Right. I mean, I need that, those resources and I do like connecting with some people from my past. <laughs> But for the most part, there's just this insane pressure. Do yeah. you feel that? Totally. It's. I mean, if you think about it, it's like our version of milking the cow. Do you know what I mean? That's what it's become. <laughs> it's making the donuts. It's like, all right, I'm going to post Time about my my new makeup tutorial. Like today I was like, I just, I, my hair is pink right now. You guys can't see it, but, and my roots are showing, but I ran out of the stuff to like redo my roots. So I was like, oh, I discovered that I could put pink eyeshadow in my hair and it worked. Wow. And I was like, hey, God, like, I'm not a makeup tutorial person, obviously, <laughs> but I was like, I should totally post this. And I was like, Ugh. how did you get pink hair? Did you have to bleach it first? I did. And I'm and, a brunette. And how was that bleaching process? Um, I totally screwed it up you myself. Did it I tried to do it myself on wow. the cheap uh, times being what they are and screwed it up. So then I called my gal who normally does my hair. And then she fixed it. And she fixed it beautifully. Did she charge you more or the same? Or did you think I to yourself, think why didn't I just do it? She charged me about the same. But did you think why I should have done that to begin with? Yeah. My daughter really wanted blue hair to start seventh grade. You know, who doesn't? And it was like this whole thing and she saved up this money and she was so excited. It was <gasps> did she do it herself and it didn't come out blue? No, we went to the hairdresser, uh, but it did not take. And they said the only, even though she's blonde, they said the only way it'll take is if you, you, you're you going to have to bleach it. They didn't charge me. It's my, like, my, oh, that's nice. Hi, Paul. Shout out to Paul McKay over there. Uh, Salon Paul Florent. You are awesome, and I'm super happy you're here, Mary Birdsong. You are, like we said, an actress and a singer. And if, I, I, I say immediately comedian because you've done so many funny things. Like, you were in Reno 911. And just that one, I was looking at you on YouTube, and you've got this thing on, you know, you're on stage, and you're with, like, a big furry guy, you know, who plays, oh, like, yeah, a cop. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, do- that's one doggy, of the first things I did, a yeah. doggy dog cop, and then, you Talking know, to a high school about drugs. You guys start, Snippy is drugs. <laughs> you guys start literally tumbling around on the stage. He's, like, he's humping me. It he's he's absolutely, humping me. Absolutely, absolutely. And I pull I a gun on him. guffawing. It was so funny. Uh, you were also on The Daily Show, which was super cool, and then you were on, I think you were on, were you on Conan, or what's another nighttime I did. It, I on? did do uh, Conan as, like, the staring contest Amazing, people for a while, yeah. but I was also on as a guest, which was so exciting. Yeah, that was when I was on Broadway. Yeah, yeah, it's thrilling. Yes, and you've been on Broadway in the show Hairspray, amazing. Mm -hmm. And then you worked with Martin Short, who's like my hero. Uh, Fame becomes me. That was on Broadway. Yeah. How many shows of that did you do? Oh, a lot because we toured. Even though it wasn't on Broadway for more than like one season, we. I love that I say season like it's television. Well, I don't know, but um, I mean it wasn't like more than you know it was from like. I don't know, like August to January or something like that. Um, but we toured all year before that and did two workshops before that. So it was a long time. So spending he was with Martin with those Short people. on tour with you then? Yes. And did he split? Did he like leave the tour? Did he go home? No. He well, he was- did it. I think at a cut maybe because what like well we we did a sit down in Toronto for like a month I think. Wow. And he has this beautiful like lake house up in the. Canadian lake area Amazing. and we got to stay there with him like he took us with him and is I he was, naturally funny all the time he naturally is, he is. He and seems he's just incredible he really seems he seems so um like just legitimate and yes and um, mean he's terribly terribly mean but in the most like egalitarian <laughs> way like I don't drink I'm sober and he'd be like we're gonna get birdsong to drink 
Come on, bird song. And I'm like, shut up. Now, more recently, you've been on Succession on HBO. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yes. They've got a lot of uh, billboards out right now. Have you they noticed? really do. They're, they're really... And the succession, it's supposed to be kind of mirroring whose family? Like a Trump family? or People say the Murdochs and they the keep Murdoch. denying it, no. so who knows? I see, yeah. Like but Rupert Murdoch. Rupert that whole, Murdoch, that who empire. I guess had Fox and maybe yeah. he still does, I don't know, but yeah. And here's something you did on YouTube, which I just, I can't even believe your ingenuity and your commitment to artistry. You did a different character every day for 365 days. Well, for 180 days so far. I see. Okay, so, so we're I did. I haven't finished it yet. I was scrolling, but there are dozens are passing. I can't watch them all. It's I crazy. It's so. It's okay. St- they're not all gems. You're still doing it. I'm still technically doing it. I've just had to take a little bit of a hiatus because that pesky work kept happening. And well, no, that's a good, that's a good problem. But each character, are you drawing? What are you drawing upon? Um, sometimes just desperation of like oh, I got to come up with something. But do you go to like okay, elementary school friends go? Or something like that in your past, or like my next door neighbor, or a doctor I knew. Sometimes, or- yeah. So, like, I did one about my um, lovely, lovely dental receptionist at my dentist's office, just because I love her voice. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, Miss Tony? Or is that my dentist's office? What's it going to happen? And she's just always cheery. She'd be like, "The Twin Towers were just hit." Oh wait, my god! Wait, wait, when you were, um, yeah, it always goes up at the end. Yeah. When you are um, an impressionist, I would imagine because would you say you're an impressionist or uh, no? to an extent? To like, an extent. I love just like being other people because when you hear voices, then you must immediately break it down, like in your head. Like, it, yeah. To me, I think it's just like he- music. Like yeah. it's like learning a song, except it's a person. And a lot of times, because I mean, I've done a lot of voiceovers, uh, like I've narrated 11 audiobooks. Yeah, you have such a great voice. But I've never done like the character thing. Like I don't have that. It's just such a talent to be able to do so many voices. But I guess in my head, I'm thinking that you would draw upon like, uh, like people from your past. And then you think about like the speed, that's what I was gonna say, the speed of their voice. Mm -hmm. Some people talk very quickly and that's how you can discern voices just by the speed of what you're talking. Yeah. It's like, there's gotta be some sort of hook that you can latch, like a handle that you can latch onto and hold onto. Because like, if you think of a suitcase, it has, it's filled with stuff, right? But you can't get to the stuff unless you can like hang onto it, like carry the suitcase and open it. And so there's something that lets you like hold it and open it to see what's inside, but it's a way in, if well, that makes any sense. Now I know why I'm not able to do it. <laughs> and it's not technical it. at all. It's just like, it's like a dog who likes the sound of a certain person's voice. It's not like what they say. It's like the sound of what they yeah. say and, and the, the vibe that they put out and the... You're yeah. listening in a different way. I yeah. Think. And it's like, you feel like you know something about them that they're not saying. Yeah. Huh. Uh, listen, you guys can find Mary over on her website, marybirdsong.com, and you can also find her on Twitter. And are you, are you doing the Instagram thing as well? Sure. I'm, uh, Twitter is at Mary Birdsong. Instagram is at Mary Birdsong Official. Oh, interesting. Somebody took Mary Birdsong. They did. Isn't I that weird? I hate that. Why do people do that? It's I terrible. Don't know. Well, I know why they do it. They want you to pay them for well, it. Well, I hunted her down. Did you and she? And I made her change her name. Really? Nuh uh. No. Nuh uh. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> All right, you guys, wherever you are, put your hands together for Mary Bird Song. So I was 15 and I lived in South Jersey on the shore. And we, um, we were talking earlier about, you know, sort of economically challenged uh, growing up. Uh, and so we, you know, at times we were on welfare, food stamps, got the like charity lunch at school, embarrassing. Um, <laughs> Did they point that out? Because they're not allowed to do that anymore. I think we had to like use a special like bright neon coupon or something or like go to a special line. That's horrible. That's horrible. They're like government cheese. You know, like (laughs) we had to wear a hobo outfit. It was awful. I had to sing, brother, can you spare a dime? (laughs) (laughs) No. But uh, even if it wasn't like that, like that's what you felt like it was. Um So that was a whole thing. Like, I remember having to sort of, like, being at the cafeteria table, and this one girl, I'll call her Jill. um, I remember she was like, your mom works at T-Burger. And my mom, I think at the time, was, like, working at T-Burger, which is, like, a local fast food joint, because we didn't have a McDonald's. There was, like, (laughs) I think there was, like, T-Burger and T-Drink. I don't know. There was, like, T-something. We had a Winkies. Winkies. And they had the big wink. (laughs) Nice. The big wink. (laughs) You know what? I'm going to get the big wink. So funny, right? Right. And you had Wawa's in South Jersey. Too. Oh, I want to go down to Wawa, get a hoogie. 
Hey, a glass of water? Tasty cake. Get some orange juice. <laughs> Hon, you want lettuce tomato? You want mayo on it? How about the Phillies, Hon? That's my favorite, awful, horrible accent in the world. <laughs> Philly accent. My friend Austin, who grew up in Cherry Hill, which is basically Philadelphia, but in New Jersey, he would call me up. He had this character he would do called Uncle Lou. <laughs> and he wouldn't leave me any message except, Hey, how you doing, hon? It's Uncle Lou. He's talking to your Aunt Teresa. She's over there to act me. Getting some hoogies. All right, give me cool, hon. Hangs up. <laughs> Made me laugh and laugh and laugh. Uh, he's gone now. God bless Austin. But so... That's where I grew up is the South Jersey place where um, I was kind of surrounded, I guess, by middle class, maybe. Um, to me, they seemed like upper middle class or like wealthy if they owned their own home. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they had a car that wasn't from like 20 years ago that works. Ah, that's interesting when you can actually drive it. And, um, and like we washed our clothes at a laundromat. Like everything was just kind of like off and weird. You know when you like have that rack of like slightly damaged or slightly irregular. Like <laughs> like we were just slightly irregular. We're like we didn't live in a shack. You know what I mean? We had running water. But I was just like why? Why do we have dinner at 1030 at night? Like <laughs> my mom was a night owl. My mom was like this poet from you know like the 1800s. She was a very sort of like Tennessee Williams, black sheep, Southern belle that moved up north. And she was from Louisiana. And she had a very soft voice. And she always sounded like she was just about to cry, even if she wasn't. (laughs) Oh, Christine, if she were here right now, look at this beautiful apartment. Uh, Oh, (laughs) it's so bright and colorful. (laughs) Oh, and look at the grass, Mary. Like, she just, I don't know what was happening in there. Ethereal. Ethereal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ethereal, ethereal. That's the word. And she really was. She was a poet. She was a writer. And we would, like, encourage her to, like, send her writing out to, like, send it to magazines. And, you know, she would get a job at, like, the local newspaper, which they didn't do any news. Do you know what I mean? Like, literally one time the front page during the winter was, like, somebody broke into a house and played their Monopoly game. And they didn't put the pieces away. That's just wrong. <laughs> or there was like one that was like suspicion, suspicious persons seen. <laughs> like, what did that mean? Black? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that was code, <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't know. But um, so it was this weird, very small town. So I'm sure everybody kind of knew everybody's business. Um, so in a way, I almost feel like if I had grown up in like a really poor community like maybe I would have just felt more normal but so I think it was I was set up to succeed as like that outsider Mm -hmm. comic you know the thing that creates a a comedian Comedian, right a mother that's needs cheering up that's that's one that's a theme I found that repeats itself over and over again Mm -hmm. um who's either very sick or just needs some boosting I don't know if you saw the Stephen Colbert Anderson Cooper yes I did interview on CNN if if the people listening you guys and gals watch it no matter what look it up it's I call it like the Joseph Campbell power of myth interview of our generation there was a famous interview with Bill Moyers and Joseph Campbell this mythology folklorist famous teacher and uh it's so amazing but they both talked about <clears throat> sort of that feeling that responsibility to be a support for their mother. Yeah, because Anderson Cooper's mother had just died, right? Gloria Vanderbilt. And that mm-hmm. was, it was after that. And then Stephen Colbert lost his mother when he was 12. He, he lost his father, his father and the boys, he called them. Two yes, brothers. Yes, <clears throat> in an accident. It was either a, yeah. a lake accident or a car accident. And something. they were um, they were a big family. It was like 11 kids yeah, or something, yeah, but Catholic. he was the youngest. So yeah. it, it was just him and his mom left. Mm-hmm. And even though she was a very different mother from Anderson Cooper's mom, and she was a very, sounds like a very strong uh, woman, especially mm-hmm. to have survived that mm-hmm. um, and not gone nuts. But he still felt this kind of, you know, put your big boy pants on and, and make mom laugh. Yeah. And, uh, and, no, and also he said it gave him a sort of a fearlessness about, you know, being seen as foolish or awkward because he's like, I got, I think yeah, when you survive something horrible like that, I think you do have a sort of a like, well, nothing can touch me now. What, you know, I, I survived that. So you think I'm weird? Okay. Yeah. 
God sure. bless, you know. Um, so all that to say, so that's kind of a very similar mom mm-hmm. that I grew up with. And I think Anderson Cooper called his mom a fragile space alien. <laughs> and he had to show her how to, like, get by on Earth. Aww. Like, I kind of felt that way. Like, wow. my mother needed a guide. You know, she needed, like, a, a Sherpa um, to go to the grocery store. Uh, <laughs> you know. And so there wasn't a lot of, like, child, I think, childhood traditional. And even when I was, like, younger and things were, to me, seemed stable, um, I just never liked playing with the other, like, I, I always resented when they would, like, put, like, you're nine and she's nine. Yeah, well, that's got to be perfect. Go for it. <laughs> you know, there are a lot, I'm 51, there are a lot of 51-year-olds I don't care for, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. We don't just, like, g- get in a room and play jacks, yeah. you know. Nine-year-olds, too. A right. Lot of them I don't like. <laughs> and that was one thing, like, my mother also had this weird edge about her, like, she was, like, she loved children, but she was, like, you know what, I love children, but not all children. Some yeah. children are assholes. That's fair. And I was, like, love it. Um, but so she was this very eccentric, you know, one night we'd have like Swanson frozen dinners on our rickety TV trays. And then the next night she'd be like, I made Yorkshire pudding. You know, (laughs) she loved like British things. She loved foreign movies with subtitles. And, you know, it was just like champagne taste on a beer budget. We were raised very fancy and very white trash at the same time, which I think was kind of an awesome combo. But I always had this like, I'm going to aspire to greatness, you know, as soon as I can get a pair of sneakers that fit me or something, you know. And I did have a sense that the electricity might go off. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I had that sort of adult knowledge of, you know, you have to pay for things. This isn't a given. Um, and so my French class, so here's an example. Like, I was in a French class and in from fourth grade on, which was awesome. I remember... Mm, Two percent of it. Um, du passant, uh, je pense. But um, but I really liked French class because again, it was sort of like like hearing people's voices and escaping and escaping, yeah, and like allowed me to be somebody else and and so I enjoyed it. And I think my no sophomore year, they were going to Paris for a cultural educational trip, and my best friend uh, Nina Toul was going. And a lot of people that I, I liked, and I really wanted to go. And I think at first my mom did something reasonable, like ask my father if he could help us out um, to pay for it. And um, he did not want to do that um, for whatever reason. Um, and he had a very lovely home in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and I like worked after school and stuff and... So, but I didn't really think I was going to get to go. I think my mom said, "Like, well, I'll, we'll try. We'll see what we can do." What was the amount? It was like over a thousand dollars, and this was in what eighty four, nineteen eighty four. I should try and find out if I have some record of how much that cost back then. But to me, whatever it was, it it's seemed a like a lot of money yeah. that we didn't have. Um, and so she was trying, and but and my sixteenth birthday was coming up. Um, And then my mom also, she didn't have a job most of the time. She was very sort of like a sociophobe. Um, The house was dark. It was sort of warm and cozy and, you know, um, inviting. Uh, I almost think of like those like, what do you, what do they call them? Like the Hobbit, the, the, the Shire. It was like a Shire, you know, Um, but with pork and beans and tater tots. Um, And, so I really wanted to go, and I was also, P.S., in sixth grade, I remember. I was really proud of this. My teacher came up and said, we had to take a language aptitude test before we went into junior high to, and, and take a language. And so I got the highest score. And it was kind of a cool test. It was like yeah. made-up languages and stuff. Um, but I got the highest score in the entire school. And so I was like, I was thinking I was going to major in French because I didn't, I had no, like, fantasies or any even desire at that point to be a entertainer or a performer I just seemed like we well, don't do that you know what I mean you might make people laugh but you don't do yeah, that yeah that's they grow those people on farms and exotic you know islands that aren't the island I live on and they just didn't have anything to draw upon how could they know right right yeah and so I assumed I wasn't going I think I'm trying to remember um it's so hard when you tell these stories from many, many years ago. Like, 
I'm sure half of this I am totally misremembering, but you know, what can you do? Yeah. Um, sure. But so it was getting closer and closer to my birthday and my best friend is talking about going and my other friend. And, um, and so my mom, uh, unbeknownst to me, well, I remember I did a show about my mom and, and I said like, my mom did what any practical parent would do in this situation. She borrowed $300 from a priest and took it to Atlantic city to (laughs) play blackjack. (laughs) Right. That's in the, that's in the Spock <laughs> parenting handbook or whatever. Um, so, but the fun part is, um, one, and my mom would tend to go, you know, at night, you gamble at night. So I remember one night, because she couldn't afford a babysitter. Um, she, I, didn't, I just thought of that now. No wonder why she took us. She piled my little sister and me. I was 15, so my little sister would have been eight. Wow. And we kind of got a little bit dressed up, and she took us, you know, put us in the car and drove us down to Atlantic City. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so South Jersey. Right. At that time, especially, it was hot, man. At yeah. The Atlantic City was on fire. Yeah, gave Dan Atlantic City. Yeah, the Sands. Our, our lovely Caesars. president. Yeah, was, Trump Palace or whatever. Was it busy getting, you know, being bankrupt and failing mm-hmm. um, and turning the whole place into a horrible, horrible crime nest. But, so we went to Atlantic City and she was playing blackjack. And, and I didn't... Where would she put you guys? Well, that's the thing. We couldn't go on the... Floor. Casino floor. Yeah. Because we were underage. So I remember we were sitting on this balcony like high above the gambling floor. Oh, no. Right? And like two angels on that, like the Raphael angels on the cloud. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you're watching her. Watching her down below. She's wearing like a, a, a white lace. They call them prairie blouses. They were all the rage. Yeah. Gunny sacks. Yeah. They were lacy affairs with big ruffles. They were supposed to be like reminiscent of pioneer days. Laura Ashley ish. Laura Ashley. Oh yes. And and I I'm I was dressed up in this outfit of, you know, these like nice hand me downs that my downstairs neighbor gave me. She was like she worked in an office and I thought that was so cool and professional. And I like wanted her to be my mother and she gave me her like throwaway nice clothes. <laughs> and and so my little sister Veronica, God bless her, is eight years old and I'm over it. You know what I mean? P.S. There's no cell phones. There's no Game Boys. There's no, I didn't have like, there's no fax machine. Like there's nothing you can bring to like, you know. By the time. I don't even think we were using Walkmans yet, really. Yeah. Um, so I was just annoyed that I'm like having a babysit and sit in this dumb lobby. But I'm watching my mom and she's like nursing one drink the whole time. And she's so, like, pristine. She's so self-conscious about her appearance and manners. And, you know, it's really, it's like... um, She's doing this. She's gambling for you to go to Paris. Yeah, which I did not know. Oh, wow. And so, uh, what's the... uh, Jane Austen, uh, what's the um, sad poet who's like Edna St. Vincent Millay or something? Like, it's like that. It's like this 18th... Or 19th century poet is sitting at the blackjack table Emily with a bunch Plath. of... Yeah, and, you know, like, hey, how you doing, Sylvia Plath. Yeah. Sylvia Plath. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, except she would never read Sylvia Plath because she was far too depressed as it was, so yeah. she would want to read, like, I want to read Robert Browning or... You know, I don't know, some, or Reader's Digest. I want it to rhyme. <laughs> I want to see some effort. Um, but, so I didn't know that, but she was gambling to try and win the money. And she won over $2,000. Oh, my God. Nuh-uh. Yeah. So, and like, she was night, good at it. Night. Yeah. Wow. She was good at it. And it almost became a problem because when, when she didn't have rent, sometimes she would be like, it's, I got to do this. This is the only option right now. And oftentimes she would win. Um, I think also because she had that appearance. You almost like doing, like, the hustler, like Paul Newman, sort of like nobody would think she would. Yeah be really good at what she was and doing. And she was playing blackjack. She was playing black, blackjack. Maybe other stuff too, but not like, not slot machines and stuff like and that. And then you did go to Paris. I did. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, like cut to the chase, Mare. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. Did you share that with other kids? Did you tell people? Uh, well, I mean, we, I went with a whole group. With, but did you tell them, I, you know, that, well, I married, we didn't think you could come. Well, my mother won this money the other night I don't over think the Taj I did. Mahal. I don't think I did. Yeah. Because it was like, it was a secret. It's kind of dirty in a way. That's like, the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Did she give you spending money as well? No. I think I maybe had like $200 of babysitting money. Yeah. For like Turn a week. Turn those into francs. Yeah. Yeah. And I ran out of money while I was there. Yeah. 
And but you were with a school. You were but okay. I was with a school, yeah. and of course, I I was a goody two shoes in high school, like super nerd. Yeah. Um, but I was like, it was like Vegas. It was like Atlantic City. Like what happens in Paris stays in yeah. Paris. Like oh. we were on the plane. We were like writing up a French like revolution sort of declaration of independence. We were drinking already. We were allowed to drink because wow. of the cultural quote unquote oh, experience. Because right. they drink wine in Paris yeah. when you're 15. And so the parents had to sign a permission slip to let us do oh, that. Oh my gosh. Who I were have- the chaperones? Madame uh, Hernandez. And she was the teacher as well. She was the teacher. She was amazing. She was part of the French resistance during wow. World War II. Oh, it's so Les Mis. She was unbelievable. She'd be like an Eponine or something. She was unbelievably great. <laughs> wow. But for some reason, um, so I got, I was like suddenly sitting with a, a table of popular girls and I was like, oh my God, I'm a different person here. Yeah. All bets are off. I'm cool here. Yeah. I was like Jerry Lewis. Like I'm big in Paris and they love me here. <laughs> And like I knew how to say like screwdriver in French. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you were um, wearing dark clothes. And oui, 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 silhouettes. Oui, oui. Yeah. yeah. And uh jus d'orange mélangé, s'il vous plaît. Ooh, you do that so good. What does it say? What did you mean? Uh, I because they were trying to order a screwdriver and all they could get was orange juice. And so I was like, no, <laughs> jus d'orange, orange juice, yeah. mélangé, mixed with uh vodka or vodka, whatever. Near it enough. Was. <laughs> yeah, I forget. But they're like, oh we oui, oui, oui. and I was like, I got you. And um and so, but I got shit faced because I didn't know how to drink. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So I was like, I had like red wine followed by slow gin fizzes. In Paris. In Paris with oh. these like cool girls. Oh. Had n- I don't think I had anything in my stomach. Slow gin fizz? That's like Gross. a wedding drink. And red wine. <laughs> P.S. I think slow gin fizz is what I saw my mom drinking at the casino. Yeah. And, and it was like a, like a whiskey sour yeah, or an yeah. apricot sour. A Tom Collins. <laughs> Give me a Greyhound, would you? A pina colada. Why not? <laughs> How about a rusty nail? Something um, with, a, what they, with a sidecar. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so I got so shit-faced and I got drunk and I fell into a fountain. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. And I'm the goody two-shoes. I'm not the party girl. Yeah. But I got made an example of. Madame was furious with me, and I wasn't allowed to drink for the rest of the trip. Wow, yeah. And I have a great photo of me with super big jersey hair and a spree um, corduroy jeans. Sure, sure. Um, with a croissant, amazingly and then, hungover. And then you came back, though, from Paris. I did. And it was a success. It was. It I was. love your mother so much. I do, too. I just can't believe she did that. I mean, it's so kind. Now, did she ever do anything like that again in terms of gambling to get you something? All the time. No way. Yeah. So and it was, was always she... like a scheme. It was always like Ralph Cramden, like, I got an idea. Well, do you remember her losing as well? Oh, yeah. And what was that like? Scary. That's very upsetting. Yeah. So she was an addict. No. I think she was. I mean, she didn't drink normally. She had like yeah. one drink if she went out somewhere. But she um, had medication. I think she was sort of like a pill head. Wow, um, she was bad. on Valium. And she oh, was wow. heart. She was like, not until she was 70 was she diagnosed as bipolar and oh, per- wow. borderline personality disorder. Oh. So there was definitely a flip side, a dark side we're not talking about today, yeah. which but was her very crea- hard. her creativeness sounds like you got a lot of that. Oh, beautiful. I mean, amazing. And the craftiness. Her creativity, like, yeah. You know, poverty is the mother of uh, crafty. Yeah, like, no kidding. She was just always no like kidding. taking, we got. F- Being broke is a huge impetus. Right. I saw a sofa on the street coming here yeah. that somebody was throwing out and I like, I immediately wanted to like go over and check it out because we, we we used to get our our yeah. furniture from people's sidewalk trash. Yeah, it was, I remember it was shop- going around on garbage pickup day yeah. and looking at people's stuff. But a lot of times that was just like to look look for stuff that we could throw off the roof. You know what I mean? To you know to smash. <laughs> My brother used to love smashing things. You know? I love it. We grew up very similarly. And when I was in South Jersey, it was it was 1983, 1984. For those two summers. Yeah. So it was kind of the same era. And going to Atlantic City, that was the shit, man. Everybody went to Atlantic City. Yeah. That was like the deal. And you had to dress up in the casinos. You had to look pretty nice. It wasn't at all yeah. like, like Vegas casinos. Right. No, sweat, look... no sweatpants back then. Do you then. remember the big uh, elephant over there in uh, Atlantic City? What was that? The I big don't Lucy think so. elephant. Big, it was a big elephant. You could go into it. It was called Lucy the Elephant. Come on. Was it like an amusement park? No, it was just like a, a roadside attraction. You I know, do not. As if it were Maybe like, because. Because we grew up sort of so close to there. Maybe. We just didn't do the touristy things or something. There's this giant elephant. It always comes to mind. Oh, my God. (laughs) Anyway, when's the last time you went? I was in Jersey. I was in South Jersey. uh, 1996 is the last year I was there. When's the last year you were there? Wow. Um, I think 20... 
16. Oh, good. Okay. You were just there then, really. Yeah. And that's a whole other story. That's, I I actually, I was my mom's hospice nurse. Oh, yeah. So I was with my dad when he passed. God Um, bless you. I wasn't the nurse, but we had hospice people coming in. They were like angels, man. They were fantastic people. But did you have those people with you as well? They came for like an hour and then they would a day, Monday through Friday. Yeah. Which (laughs) my friend when I was writing was like, which is great because her kidneys didn't fail on weekends. That was party time. You know what I mean? Like (laughs) But the twenty four seven stuff was was just me. Yeah. Um, So that was But you'll never you'd never give that back, huh? No way. Isn't it amazing? No way. Like yeah, I, I find that time I spent with my dad the last five days, man, was it was good. Yeah, it was and good. It, like Vietnam at the same time, yeah. it, it's it was horrifying in certain ways, but but beautiful and wonderful, and it's yeah. such a privilege to get to you, bear witness to somebody's death. It's like um, you know, like I said, I have a child, and you read that I read that book, you know, what to expect when you're expecting, and if you're lucky enough to die in a way where you can be on hospice and just you know it's coming and you're going out, then you check off all those same things. Like when you're expecting a baby, you check them all off. You know, first this happens and this happens. Right. And your feet are cold, and then you. Then you try to get up, and then you want what? Then you stop eating, and then you see people. You know, there's is that in what to expect when you're expecting? No, it's in the <laughs> it's in the hospice checklist. So it's like, I oh, so I, how macabre? I guess what I'm doing is like I'm just comparing that. Like, there's a way to come into the world, and there's a way to go out. Because that's a wonderful book. I mean, I and kind of wish I had read before I went there. Like, you mean the hospice? You must have gotten the hospice rule. Like in, the, like in hospice, they'll give you like these are the 15 signs you're going to look for. I guess They're it probably is like, oh, whatever. <laughs> Anyway, I, I think it's be better to go out that way. Where are the trash, trash bags and the bandages? Yeah. I'll get, I know what I'm doing. But it's a better way. I don't know. Well, no, how, you're right. How do we get to this? In other words, I don't want to die in trauma. That's my point. Me neither. And I think, I'm hoping, I think the tide's turning. In fact, I just uh, DVR'd a documentary called, I think something, uh, Six New Ways mm. or something. Anyway, there are people like in Canada, you can plan your own death and like have a party and yeah. do euthanasia. Yeah. And play the music you want and yeah, have the meal you want and want. have the people that's over. Like, why I'm on earth do, do we do it the other way? I don't so. know. It is odd. Hey, listen, I'm so happy to meet you. You Likewise. are such a talent. I feel like I could talk to you all day. You're such Likewise. a talent and you've just accomplished so much and you continue to just, just plow forward with so much stuff. I think on YouTube I saw you have over 500 or over 700 videos. Huh? Probably. It's crazy. Yeah. So much content. I kind of, it's kind of a problem. It's exciting. I can't no, stop. It's fantastic. And next you're going to be judging Story Smash. That's right. Please, I want you to do that so much. You, I am you would totally it. doing it. I'm going to go great. down the, for the show this Saturday night. You'd be great. Check I'm it out. I'm telling you, it's super, super funny. You guys should check out the uh, website, storysmashshow.com. You should do that because I built the website, so I know it's good. She yeah. built it. I she built like it. had the hammers and the nails. <laughs> she was inside the computer. All right, you guys, I got to wrap it up. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. Tweet Mary over on Twitter at Mary Birdsong and let her know that you like her story. And then tweet me over there as well at Storyworthy. Would you do that? Yes. Thank you. Yes. And I want to thank the sponsors on the show today. Really, you guys, when you support my sponsors, then you are supporting me. And I thank you. And on behalf, one more time, of the very talented and just, you're just so fantastic you are such an inspiration and i'm just super happy you came thank you mary birdsong thank you for having me my name is christine blackburn saying make it a story worthy thanks for joining us on the story worthy podcast We'll be back next week with all new stories. Subscribe to StoryWorthy on iTunes and visit the StoryWorthy website at storyworthypodcast.com. Caregivers, are you and the person you care for not satisfied with your current home care agency? Then you need to call Help at Home as we offer the highest paid wages, weekly pay, overtime pay, benefits, and do not forget paid time off. Help at Home is actively recruiting caregivers who are caring for a loved one. We make changing agencies quick and easy. 
Call one of our care professionals now at 412-784-6711. That's 412-784-6711 or go to helpathomepa.com. Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Hi, it's Carl Deichler, CEO of Beachbody, and I'm giving away 10,000 free memberships a week to try our amazing Beachbody fitness and nutrition programs. Pick any program and just follow it step by step, like our 21-day fix program or the ab shredding muscle burns fat program. Plus, there's free support in personalized fitness groups with our community of over 2 million members. Now is the time, so don't wait. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great.